Hello to everyone then and welcome to the 12th, already 12th webinar on ed education and training in the space sector. Uh, I'm very happy to see you all here. Uh, the, some people that uh, we know already in the audience and they follow every webinar, but also uh, our speakers, the panel of speakers. Uh, this information session, as you already know, uh, will focus on how European space ed education responds to commercialization uh, to the industry needs. Uh, we will delve into key questions such as the development of curricula, how educational um, institutions collaborate with the industry, how, what are the skills need and, and needed and how they develop, uh, and of course ethical considerations. Um, for those who are not aware of, uh, of our network, uh, of our space organization, Areus, very briefly, uh, we are a regional network. Our members are uh, European regions using space technologies, using space. Our role is to promote uh, the use of, of space towards uh, the European leaders, but also um, uh, to showcase the benefits of, of, of space to regions and citizens. This is in a nutshell. Usually I share a, a presentation, but today um, we need to finish a bit earlier, so I will give the floor immediately to, to the speakers. From my side, it, to highlight that uh, regions, in order to, to grow and uh, develop, uh, they consider education and training an essential factor uh, for that. And they invest uh, a lot of budget and um, a lot of efforts to have a good education uh, regarding space, how to use space. Today we have a very diverse panel of speakers, one from uh, UK, uh, from the London School of Economics, Economics and two from Nereus member regions, Poland and Catalonia. They all have experience in space education and commercial activities. And today we join forces to discuss what's needed for future uh, human resources in the space industry and the role of education on that. Uh, and while we often ponder um, this question today, we will explore different aspects of the same uh, subject. And um, I will start with Dr. Jill Stewart. Uh, it's an honor to have you with us today, Jill. Uh, and just to make it very simple to, to the audience and to everybody who here who is hearing us today, uh, whenever BBC has a question about space, they call Jill. So you understand how important a figure is uh, in the space sector, especially in the academia. To go into details, uh, she works um, at the London School of Economics and Political Science. Uh, she's an expert in the politics, ethics and law of outer space exploration, exploration and exploitation. She is also an award winning lecturer and teacher and a frequent and she has a frequent presence in the global media. Um, uh, and as you know, uh, UK is known for its model universities and London School of Economics is one of them, of course. Uh, and uh, what I would like to ask from uh, Jill today is to give us an overview of the US UK space education and how it differs or not uh, from, from the EU. Um, also, uh, it would be important because uh, Jill also, um, she has experience on, spa uh, on space sustainability challenges and it would be interesting to hear what are these, what kind of challenges um, are raised by the space commercialization. Uh, so, Jill, the floor is yours uh, and we are very much looking forward to hear. <laughs> To, to hearing from you. Thanks very much for having me this morning, for inviting me. Um, you'll see I'm actually in my car, <laughs> which is a little bit unusual. Um, unfortunately, I had a funeral that, um, that I'm attending right after this. So um, it was my neighbor and she was 96 years old. So it's a, a celebration of life <laughs> um, as well as, as mourning her passing. We wish but, to yeah, live so, so long. It's a wish that yes, we live I, so long. Yes. 
yeah, she had an amazing life. Um, but for that reason, I apologize that I'm going to have to log off um, at about 1040. So I can't stay for the entire session, but thank you for having me. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to talk a little bit of from the, the UK perspective. I've been, um, you can hear from my accent that I'm actually North American. I'm from the United States, but I've lived in the UK since 2001 and I actually came to the UK in order to do my master's degree and then my PhD all at the London School of Economics. So I've been in the UK higher education system for a long time. Um, talking about commercialization, one thing I, I always want to highlight when I'm talking to audiences is I think we think of commercialization as being something that's very new, but actually uh, space commercialization has been around since the 70s and the 80s. In the United States, for example, particularly under President Reagan, there was a real push to start moving um, space activity to the commercial sector. So this is something that's been evolving for a long time, but we have seen obviously a, a huge increase in the number of uh, commercial satellites that are going up and uh, the global reliance on space infrastructure. Also, I think public awareness of the importance of space commercialization. So that's something that I've, I've seen change myself in the 25 years that I've been researching in this area is a real awareness about space activity and particularly space commercialization. Um, I think it's interesting talking about um, space, therefore, in specifically with regards to education. Again, I think because students also, as they're coming into um, their edu their higher education, are more aware of the opportunities uh, that are available to them. However, I think there is some difficulty in defining what exactly we mean by education in, in the space sector. I mean, I personally work in, in law, politics, and ethics, and then there's obviously the science side of things as well as policy and regulation. But within the UK, I think we focus on a couple of different differentiations, um, engineering and technical roles, research and development, satellite manufacturing and operations, space agencies and government organizations, um, newer one space tourism and commercial space flights uh, because we have had um, some involvement in the for example the head of virgin galactic for a long time was a, a british a british man and of course um richard branson is british even though their operations are mainly based in the united states also data analysis and remote sensing startups and entrepreneurships and then education and outreach. And I think that universities are increasingly recognizing the importance of these and developing programs to fulfill them. Um, I think sort of the obvious thing coming from the UK that you have to talk about is the issue of Brexit. So um, even though we're no longer part of the European Union, we are still part of the European Space Agency and we do still receive a lot of our funding for um, space research from the European Union. Um, I personally was against Brexit for what it's worth, but um, here we are. Um, but I think one of the issues that we're coming across increasingly that I'm seeing at the LSE is, is issues of visas. So um, now students have to have visas in order to come study here. 80% of our um, student body are actually from abroad, not necessarily Europe, though, from all over. One of the things that I think is positive is that we've reintroduced the post study work visa in the UK. So students know that once if they come to study in the UK and graduate, then they can work here for two years. That was in place when I first came to the UK myself as a student in 2001. It was then scrapped for a period of time, um, which I was very much against, and it really upset a lot of students, but it's now been re-implemented. So I think this um, issue of mobility is really important, and it's something that the UK is particularly challenged by at the moment. Um, and then also, I think this, uh, in terms of transnational um, opportunities, there's this issue of, of um, transferability of qualifications. I think that's less of an issue when on the science side of things and technical side of things. But for example, in law, there's always going to be issues about whether or not you can study in the UK and then go back to your home country and um, act and gain the, quali uh, the um, technical qualifications that you need in order to practice. Um, so, but within that, I mean, again, I think the UK has tried to be very proactive in this area, particularly as they recognize that there's big money to be made. Um, the Space Foundation in 2020 said that commercial, the space, commercial space economy rose to $447 billion, which was 55% higher than a decade prior. And it's part of a five year trend of uninterrupted growth. So, um, you know, the government has recognized that there are financial opportunities here. One organization that I've been involved with off and on over the years um, is, an or is called Catapult in the UK, um, which is a network that supports businesses and in transforming ideas into um, valuable products and services. And so they often get involved in the space sector. 
Um, we also have websites such as um, Space University's network, um, which focuses on um, promoting students in engineering. Um, there's another a, a website called Space for Smarter Government Program, which again um, helps students who are interested in entering into this area. Um, I know one of the topics that we're talking about today is sustainability. I do a lot of work with the Space Generation Advisory Council. I actually gave a guest lecture for them last night at Imperial College London. And one of the things that I think is great is that younger generations are really um, hot on sustainability. They have a lot of awareness around it. And so that's something that I'm just hearing from um, younger students who are coming through that there's a lot of interest in. And um, uh, Margarita mentioned um, challenges. Here, I would say that there are also a lot of opportunities and again, this is something where students are are appreciating that the idea of, for example, orbital debris removal um, and also reusability of rockets and um, just general discussions around um, uh, sustainability on Earth um, as it's impacted by the space sector, but also in space is something that's very much a part of their narrative, a part of their discussions. And I think that's a positive thing. Um, so I just and sort of end by saying that um, I think that in terms of benefits, um, the UK is focused on its long term reputation in the higher education sector. There's also awareness around the issue of brain drain. So if we attract students um, that are of good talent from abroad, this issue of um, you know whether or not they then stay in the UK and sort of the ethical um, and political implications of that. Of course, we want to keep talent, but we also don't want to. Um, um, you know, we want to have capacity building by um, also exporting that talent um, back home. Um, and um, also there are a lot more discussions now around um, the space industry and job opportunities, including in both the government and the private sector. And I think that's also led to more discussions around the integration of UK higher education and, and government. Um, um, for example, the University of Bradford has a very good space um, sciences um, education program, and they're very focused on um, um, sort of uh, tr training up talent and then also making sure that that is then utilized for both government and the private sector. Um, and the other thing that I've seen that I've had some interaction with over the years, for example, at Oxford, is this idea of um, incubators. So where students have the opportunity to apply their education to potential business models and potentially um, get investment and then go on to um, sort of operationalize what they've learned in, in the sector. Um, yeah, so in summary, I would just say that, yeah, I feel like the UK is increasingly focused on having a population of educated and um, capable people to work in the space sector um, as they should do. And it's something that I'm proud to be a part of, but I think it's also important that we continue to think about how we integrate with not only Europe, but the larger um, world. Thank you, Jill, uh, for this great presentation, this summary of uh, valuable thoughts, I would say. Um, you answered almost all my questions. <laughs> So, um, first, I would like to give the floor to the audience. Uh, if you have any question or comment to Jill, I think now it's your chance and the opportunity and maybe from the other speakers as well. Uh, Josep, uh, Noemi. Something that I, I personally think about a lot. Um, I also work through the University of London with students who study all over the world. Um, mm -hmm. So we have digital education and we also have teaching centers that deliver um, UK curricula abroad, but with campuses that are in um, in Pakistan and Egypt and China and Japan. And so um, I think that there if students want to have mobility and, and come to the UK, I think that's great, but I think we also have an obligation to think about. Um, it, yeah, the implications of having sort of a Western centric curricula and. Um, yeah, what the implications are if, if people decide not to return to their home country. Having said that, one of the, the nice things about the space sector is that it is very global. So even if you are working from London, um, the implications can, you know, spread to your home country mm -hmm. or, um, you know, across Europe. And a lot of the organizations like the United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs and Committee on Peaceful Uses of Outer Space are very global. And so, um, yeah, again, I, I don't, I, Personally, I don't want to restrict people's mobility, but I also think that we need to be aware of, yeah, the implications of, of bringing 
students to the UK and sort of what they do after. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, I'm also very interested because then we will have ah Noemi raised her hand. Maybe maybe for the ones who have a question, either open your microphone or share the question in the chat because I cannot see the the hands. Okay, uh, Noemi, go first, and then Gancho. I give the floor to Gancho. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, so yeah, I have the, that question. Open is, your is, camera also. You can because I don't see you. You can also open the camera. So if you have a question, you can also. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I have a question about the companies that wishing to participate in the programs. Some of the programs that you already mentioned, or is it incubation or accelerating program? Do they have to commit to relocate, uh, opening the branch or things like that in UK? Uh, most of the countries are doing that, but do you know a programs that do not um, require that? To be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, the involvement that I've had sort of with incubators, um, I mean, there are always going to be, um, again, visa issues and, and um, government issues and so on with relocation. But um, I know that the UK um, companies do have a lot of partnerships um, with with um, other companies abroad and um, a lot of companies that um, have a UK office are also primarily based elsewhere. So, um, you know, um, Arian um, Airspace, um, we also have um, uh, companies like Boeing that have a presence in the UK, but are primarily based elsewhere. So I think there's a lot of um, openness to international collaboration um, without necessarily having a primary base in the UK. But but to be honest with you, I'm not sure about individual individual companies. Got it. Thank you. And then we have a question from Ganto. Uh, he is the CEO of a space company in Bulgaria. He asks, when talking about commercialization, it is usually connected to tech transfer and IP management. Do you think students and company managers have enough knowledge about those topics? This yeah, is the first question. Yeah. yeah, it's a great question. And it's something, yeah, that I didn't mention before that is very tricky. Um, and I think this is somewhere where the UK is has some challenges because they a lot of our space um, uh, industry works very closely with the United States and the United States mm -hmm. is particularly um, particular about issues of tech transfer and especially right now with regards to China. Uh, and so, yeah, there are sort of geopolitical issues there. And um, it, so, yeah, I think it is one of the certainly one of the barriers and it's a good point that it's something that needs to be included in education and curriculum. And um, maybe that's an area that's that's not addressed so much. But I think as soon as people enter the the actual industry, it's something that that, that they are <laughs> introduced to very quickly. So yeah, that's a good point and something that I'll think about with regards to um, incorporating into education. And then he asks if you could share uh, with us information links of such incubators. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, again, I'm I'm in my car now, but I no, can email not, them yeah, later and you can me, distribute them. Yeah, through through yeah. the um, uh, through the follow up, uh, Ganto, I will uh, attach all these links and um, information. Yeah. Uh, any other question, comment to to Jill? Okay, I don't see something for the moment. Uh, so just so you know, I'll stay on for another 15 minutes and yes, then yes, we need you. Off. No, 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 but we need you because you may have question for the next speakers. <laughs> yes, okay. uh, Jill, uh, again, I would like to emphasize it, it was a big honor to join us today and I know you have a heavy schedule. Um, I'm very happy to have you involved as a speaker in this series of webinars. It's like a heritage for for us and. Um, uh, please stay with us for the discussion uh, and I would uh, also add that um, uh, it's quite interesting since you are um, uh, doing space policy and so on um, to maybe 
to read or to learn more about um, a new um, a, no a novelty that is going on in regions. And Josep, the next speaker, will share more information about that. But regions in Europe uh, have been very active as as since ever, but especially the last years, they developed their own regional space strategies. Uh, and this is a unique phenomenon uh, at the global level. Uh, and myself, I'm very proud that I'm very, I'm very lucky to being in this network while this is happening. Uh, but uh, Dr. Josep Colomé, uh, our next speaker, uh, who is the director of the Catalonia Space Office at the Institute of Space Studies of Catalonia, will give us more information about that. Uh, Josep is also a, a, a member of the management board of Mereus. Uh, he's leading the Catalonia Space Office since 2022. Um, and um, uh, one of the key instruments uh, uh, in Catalon in, in this office uh, is the promotion of space sector and the implementation of the new space strategy. Uh, today with Josep, uh, we will examine how the regional dimension uh, of space commercialization plays a role there. Uh, and of course, it will be interesting to know as well uh, how ac um, academic institutions, universities, research centers are involved in this respect. Joseph, the floor is yours. And let me know if you could upload also your presentation. Yes, I hope you can you can see. Yes, yes. OK, yes. good. Excellent. So first of all, uh, I really appreciate the invitation uh, to share uh, our experience and, and our activities uh, regarding the topic uh, and the discussion today. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here and sharing this uh, panel with, uh, with uh, the other panelists. Um, so I'll try to summarize what is going on here in Catalonia and connect it to the topic, especially on, on how talent uh, is important and how this is connected to the uh, commercialization of the space sector. Um, so I'll, I'll go quite quick because I have uh, maybe too many slides and I'd like to, to focus on, on the topic um, today. But I thought that is, it was um, good to share the, the full perspective that we are running uh, because uh, this uh, connects to what actually was uh, discussed uh, just a few minutes uh, ago regarding uh, brain drain and, and how to uh, retain and attract talent, uh, creating opportunities for the people that are uh, willing to uh, join this sector, the space sector, um, at, at any time on their, their on their careers. Uh, right. So let me let me first start just summarizing why uh, there is a, a strategy, a new space strategy in Catalonia. Uh, that's because of the connection of the uh, commercial activity and the digital economy in Catalonia. Here you can see. Uh, big numbers regarding the digital sector and, and the number of uh, startups created uh, in here in Catalonia, the turnover, the number of employees. This is fully connected to the digital sector, not to the space sector for sure, but uh, uh, for the digital economy, which is uh, very closely connected to the new space strategy that we uh, defined. Um, there has been an activity in Catalonia to define different uh, strategies for the digital technologies uh, with, a, with a procedure uh, to engage experts uh, running out uh, uh, an analysis of uh, the technology opportunities and how the Catalonia ecosystem can um, benefit for that and, and develop a strategy. A, a, uh, a strategy means a document that is uh, adopted by the Catalan government, and it it is uh, um, then executed together with a budget and with a policy that the Catalan government uh, puts in place with the different experts that are in the uh, in the ecosystem. Um, and here you can see the different strategies that were approved uh, since February 2019. Uh, first, the strategy for 5G communications. Afterwards, the blockchain strategy the AI Catalonia uh, strategy in February 2020 and October 2020, the new space strategy was, was approved. And, and right now there is a quantum technology strategy that is uh, going to be approved in the coming uh, months. Um, the new space strategy is basically uh, taking advantage of the Catalonia as a European digital hub and uh, to 
uh, grow to make the Catalan space ecosystem grow uh, with uh, a, co a str strong collaboration with these digital technologies and the space uh, technologies. Uh, this uh, strategy is, is led by the Catalan government and is implemented uh, by uh, three main institutions. That's our institution, the Institute of Space Studies of Catalonia, that is working on space technologies and research since uh, 1996. Uh, I took at Foundation, that is uh, an expert on digital technologies and space communications, and the Cartographic and Geological Institute of Catalonia, that is the geo information agency of the Catalan government. So these three institutions, we are all together working on uh, the implementation of this new space strategy, strategy since October 2020. Um, as you can see here, what we uh, consider the new space strategy is putting together, as I said, the space sector and digital sector with a commercial. Uh, focus on all um, uh, the activities that are defined and executed. Um, and these uh, are the different pillars that are uh, included in, in, this, in this strategy. As you can see on the bottom part, talent and society is one of these pillars. And all the rest of the pillars are connected among them. So the opportunities that we believe uh, the new space uh, economy is uh, opened a few years ago uh, uh, in the space sector uh, is identified as the way to make the ecosystem grow. So that's to create companies, create jobs. Um, and this has, go, uh, this has to go together with uh, keeping the, uh, the research and innovation on, in this sector, uh, work on the regulatory framework too, um, work with the public administration to adopt services that can be uh, coming from the space uh, technologies and develop infrastructures that are key to uh, to facilitate the, the international collaboration and also speed up the development of um, of new services and products and and finally talent is key also uh, in the in the short medium and long-term perspective to make this happen in a in a in an efficient way to avoid uh, a lack of people uh, contributing to this uh, to this growth of the space uh, ecosystem in in Catalonia. So if we uh, if we see what is going on regarding talent uh, in in Catalonia, so we have uh, been running different activities on different areas from the very early stages of the education of kids to create uh, uh, STEM vocations using a space as the as a way to motivate these same vocations also for the uh, vocation on on research so we are en encouraging uh, students to visit uh, research centers and 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 companies uh, working on on the space technologies which is a way to engage them uh, also on the on the research activities and we are putting uh, different programs uh, to help students on the uh, advanced education to engage with the space sector, uh, whatever uh, the um, the area of knowledge they have been uh, they have been um, studying. So, if they come from other areas uh, different from a space engineering, they can also enter the space um, uh, ecosystem, the space companies, uh, contributing with these different uh, skills that uh, that uh, Jill was mentioning before uh, that are needed um uh, to uh, to make the space uh, new space uh, economy grow uh in the way that uh, now it's uh, it's growing right so we are uh giving grants to students uh to um to have uh internships in uh, private companies we are also promoting industrial doctorates uh to uh to to promote this match between the students that are coming from different kind of engineering or different kind of uh, uh, science uh, uh, education uh, to connect them to the companies that are willing to incorporate these kind of uh, profiles in their in their teams. Right. We are also uh, trying to uh, to uh, professionals that uh, want to move from their uh, areas to the space sector. Uh, so we are uh, collaborating with the uh, International Space University to grant students to go to the SSP or the Executive Space Course programs, for instance, uh, to uh, risk, uh, to have this reskilling uh, for them to move from one sector to to the other and contribute to the to the growth of the of the space sector. 
then we are also working on on uh, on the awareness uh, for citizens uh, of the importance of the space sector this is uh, a, a global view of what we are doing on on regarding the talent and society also the the role of, of women is also promoted at different at different levels um, here you can see a, a view of the, the different universities that are in in Catalonia that uh, with different kind of of uh, of uh, grades that can contribute to the to the growth of the space sector um, and i also like to mention business schools which are key uh, regarding this uh, commercialization perspective of the of the space sector here are some some examples of how uh, women can contribute and this has to be promoted because this is a a, a lack of of uh, of participation of women in the space sector that we and, and I believe this is general uh, on, in other countries uh, need to promote uh, to uh, to address this problem that is is happening uh, for many years. Um, regarding the generation of opportunities, so uh, it's important to have uh, people with the right uh, skills. Uh, we need to have uh, to, to train these people, and we need to attract also and retain these uh, these people to avoid them. Uh, to move to other countries. So it's good that the people move around, uh, but uh, we believe that we need to uh, retain and attract uh, this talent to uh, to make the ecosystem grow here. Uh, this view of companies and, and public entities uh, and, and public organizations is, is important for these people to understand that there is an ecosystem where they can uh, develop themselves and different opportunities at different levels uh, as this uh, incubation of companies, acceleration of companies, uh, growing of the uh, private companies uh, is important to uh, create these opportunities to retain and to attract talent uh, at any time of their careers. The same if they want to develop themselves that they're at the, at more on their research activities. So having this, this, uh, this view of all the research activities that are happening in different areas uh, can engage different profiles coming from people that are doing uh, electronic engineering to uh, um, health uh, or uh, biotech or uh, any other kind of or cybersecurity or uh, tech, for instance. They are, these are activities that uh, can attract the participation of these other profiles in the development of research activities or commercial activities uh, that EDL will reach the market with different products and services. So with uh, mapping of this whole set of activities, we consider that this is a way to retain and attract this talent at any time in their careers. We are also putting, play, putting in place different initiatives for innovation, for public procurement, and, and promoting also private, the private development of uh, products and services. This is also a way to engage different profiles, different uh, final users, uh, train them also to use uh, uh, space technologies uh, to develop the space ecosystem here in, in Catalonia. And this is uh, where regions can play an important role. As, uh, as Margarita mentioned, regions uh, can, can make a, a, a specific role. And this is an example of that, uh, where this uh, last mile uh, that has a lot of problems to engage uh, the final users with, without a knowledge uh, to uh, understand how to use the space data, uh, this is the, the gap that needs to be solved. And with this public procurement, understanding what are the needs, what are the use cases that must be uh, solved, is a way to incentivate this connection between the final users with different profiles, different skills, uh, to the uh, space uh, service providers uh, that needs also to understand what is the final problem that, that must, must be solved. Um, and finally, regarding uh, infrastructures is also something that we are working on. And here, companies has a, an important role, a very important role. And this is requiring uh, specific talent, specific skills, and a specific companies that develop uh, these kind of activities. We are launching nanosatellites to test and develop services. And we are also opening IoT opportunities to the ecosystem. So this is a set of, of activities that uh, can engage companies, can engage uh, research teams for instance and this goes together with having the the right people uh with a, the the skills that are, that are needed to develop all this set of activities um i think this is uh, almost uh, my last slide regarding the infrastructures that are being uh, surveyed uh in in catalonia no finally this is the last slide 
where uh, the international cooperation is, uh, is also something that we uh, are covering. And this also requires uh, the proper skills of, uh, and, and the proper talent uh, to move on with this uh, uh, new space strategy in the right way to incentivate this cooperation uh, that creates the opportunities for the space sector in Catalonia. And that's it. Thank you. Josep, thank you again for this great, great presentation. Um, you underlined many interesting points, but first I would like to give the floor to Jill because I know she wants to uh, to to run for the for this uh, application. And uh, Jill, I saw a co I, I see a comment in the chat. Maybe you want uh, to share this information with uh, Josep or any other question you may have. <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to say I really appreciate um, highlighting the issue of, of gender representation in um, the space sector. Me too. And yeah, yeah. And I just thought I'd mention that in the UK in 2005, we started using Athena Swan. So all of our higher education institutions are able to submit um, information about what they're doing to promote gender equality and they receive a status, an award, um, and it's become a really good benchmark um, for for that. And I think it's actually now been spread to um, other other countries and other uh, places around the world. So it, that was all. I just I really uh, appreciated the presentation. I learned a lot about mm -hmm. um, the regional activities there. And yeah, again, thanks for bringing that particular topic up. And yeah, I'll have to go in just a minute, but thank you again. Thank you, Jill. Um, Josep, uh, do you collaborate with uh, UK? Uh, do you have any partnerships, activities? Actually, we are, we are share. Yeah, so um, actually we, we are right now having some uh, one, one. So one person of my team is uh, came from catapult. Actually, I was a, a Catalan guy that was living in UK for more than a decade. And, uh, and we, uh, Daniel, right? Right? Daniel, <laughs> right? Daniel, Daniel source. Daniel yeah. Sorge, so, yes. uh, he's, we are he's in thanks, the meeting yeah. also. <laughs> Okay. So thanks, thanks to thanks to that, we created the opportunity for somebody that was trained. Actually, uh, uh, he studied in, in Madrid, but he's coming from the Catalan ecosystem, and he saw the opportunity to come back at that time with a very good knowledge coming from the UK for uh, for his experience uh, there. Uh, but I, I don't want to focus only on on him, but on on many other uh, conversations. But he is actually promoting this conversation with people working in Catapult, in, 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 the, in RAL, in the Rutherford Appleton uh, Laboratory, and, and, and other uh, ESA also being located there and companies located there, right? So we are trying to promote this collaboration around. And, and for us, UK is a, is a very good uh, example, a very good uh, place to follow their initiatives, actually. I, I took note of, uh, of this uh, question about gender representation and this initiative that uh, Jill shared. Uh, we would like to to go more on on that direction, and and, and maybe I'll, I'll come back to uh, to her to to understand how to to use it. Um, but yes, uh, we are trying to uh, to collaborate with many other regions around uh, around Europe. Uh, actually, there is an initiative in Catalonia called uh, DETA, D-E-T-A, that is also uh, focusing on identifying how we can collaborate on disruptive uh, emerging technologies, and new space is one of them, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and so on. So, uh, yes, uh, I, I believe that in Catalonia we are uh, used to look for collaborations around uh, because uh, it's the only way uh, to manage an open economy that uh, is the way uh, most of the uh, companies and, and private sector is managing and, and the politics is, is being done this way in, in the in the region. Yeah. Uh, great, great. So, uh, sure, one of the objectives of this uh, webinar is to bring it that's also um, uh, the space stakeholders, meaning uh, the speakers or uh, people from the audience. Um, with what you said regarding uh, Jill, I mean, for the gender equality programs. Mm -hmm. um, okay, this is great. Uh, I don't see any other question in the chat. Please do not hesitate to take the floor if needed. I just have one quick question to, to Josep. You, 
you explained a bit during the presentation, but maybe you could elaborate more. Catalonia is one of the regions that they they entail um, a big a, a big space ecosystem, uh, including universities, uh, companies, uh, and many many other uh, entities. Uh, also, um, there is a focus on um, uh, engineers um, uh, for the development of the space facilities. Uh, and there I would like to ask you that if you think the current regulatory framework is sufficient regarding to, in order to ensure a responsible, sustainable behavior, we know that space debris is the biggest problem that the space sector faces at the moment. Do you think if this is sufficient? Or we need more policy guidelines and something else. I don't know. Um, yeah. So the um, so uh, I believe that uh, yes, the regulatory framework needs to be uh, needs to evolve. Mm -hmm. We need to have uh, a framework in which uh, sustainability sustainability is is agreed. At, uh, at a global level, I was actually last week in Darmstadt for the zero degrees charter um, and, and that kind of discussions are very important. Uh, also, the space traffic management initiative is, is very important. We are also contributing with uh, uh, tracking and surveillance data uh, to this space traffic management that is ongoing uh, at European uh, level for uh, satellite operators. But this needs to be global. So space uh, is is an area in which uh, nobody can go on their own because you are in the end being affected and affecting others uh, occupying these uh, orbits and and this uh, this space. So uh, it's important to have this this way of doing uh, with a regulatory framework in a way that sustainability is is kept. Uh, but there is also another perspective: is the the regulation of those activities that the space can contribute the most. So mm -hmm. monitoring from a space is giving many, many data uh, to act and take actions and to control uh, in, in the end that the, the uh, commercial and industrial activities and, and any other kind of activities that are happening on earth are sustainable too, right? So in this area of climate change, I believe that uh, these kind of regulations uh, could also contribute uh, to understand who is doing uh, the best way uh, to keep uh, sustainability and and to uh, to go and and so to put in place um, action against climate change. And this, uh, I believe, that if we have the the regulation that uh, is pushing for that, then uh, that space can contribute. In a in a in a master way uh, in that in that era in that area uh, this will be key for the development of uh, our economies in a sustainable way uh, in a world that needs uh, action to go against this uh, this climate change uh, problem. Yeah. You use space to protect space and Earth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in other words, uh, Ganso, do you have a, a quick question to Josep? I see the the hand raised. Very much. Uh, it's a really very interesting uh, topic uh, into your presentation. I know that we are going to receive it after the end of the, um, the event. Uh, my personal research field is the development of uh, Bulgarian innovation ecosystem. And now I am really, uh, I have started to read a bit more about uh, uh, space ecosystems and I'm very pleased that uh, okay, upon this information, you mentioned about, about uh, new services to be adopted, uh, local regulations, uh, uh, facility structures and talents. I, I really want to, to learn a bit more about this and how do you uh, communicate with local authorities, with local administrations in order to, uh, to push them to be a bit more active in uh, thinking about uh, developing such kind of regional space strategies. Really, this is uh, very new, very interesting. Uh, and I'm um, definitely going to read a bit more about such kind of strategies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gantso.
you wish to comment uh, joseph just very briefly uh so the uh we have been running in the last two three years uh, a, a procedure together with the current administration with the different departments uh ministries uh with uh from top to the bottom to end up talking with the technical teams that are doing specific tasks to evaluate how to manage infrastructure how to manage agriculture uh, aids or uh or energy um or other kind of topics in which there are specific teams that could benefit from using um, a space services and products. And we have been running a, a, this procedure to promote their adoption of these uh, services that are based on these kind of technologies. Uh, so this has been a way to incentivate the, uh, the application of a space technologies to the public administration, which is a, a kind of a, an anchor tenant for the space industry. And we also open these to the private sector and we trigger uh, different contracts uh, to incentivate final private users uh, with uh, a service and, and product providers to work together and remove these barriers uh, for, for these final users to, um, to motivate them to engage to the, with, to the space sector and to the space technologies. This has been uh, our, our goals and, and our activities in the last two, three years, yeah. Very impressive, Josep, I would add from my side. Um, thank you. And uh, thank you very much. Again, it's been an honor to have uh, you uh, in the team. Josep is a space expert. This is something I wanted to highlight in the beginning. And we are very honored and glad to have a space expert in the management board that leverages the quality of the, uh, of the work and, um, uh, many, many other things. Joseph, stay, stay with us, please. Um, for the rest of the time, you can stay, of course. I know that you also have some other responsibilities. Uh, but it would be interesting to listen to the next presentation from Dr. Noemi Zabari. Uh, Noemi is one of the um, uh, one of the professionals that immediately you include her in the hub of space women. And I will explain you why she's an astrophysicist, but not only that, she's an entrepreneur. Uh, she is bridging the gap between the scientific and business communities. She was recognized as strong women in IT in 2023. She is a founder of the uh, space company Astrotech. Uh, this company is dedicated uh, to um, uh, search to re for research in cosmic radiation in relation to the seismic activities, she will explain more afterwards. Uh, she is also a co-lead of the Cosmos Seismic Research Group in Credo Project and a member of, Polis, of, the, of the Polis Space Technology Cluster. Uh, and many, 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 many other things. Amongst them, she's also a mother of three or four children. I don't know how you, how you make it out, <laughs> Noemi. <laughs> I need many advices from you in the future, uh, but for the moment, uh, please share your presentation. Yes, sure. Thank you. It's for, for kids, just to be clear. Um, yes, now you can see. Yes. Perfect. So, first of all, thank you for the invitation to, the, to this uh, webinar. Uh, and you were right saying on the beginning that today the, the panelists are coming from diverse areas. Indeed, uh, today I will focus on the space technology in, uh, in Poland. That's what I was asked for. Uh, but first... uh, sorry, Noemi, with regards to what you said, it, part of this webinar is also to challenge the panel of speakers, <laughs> not only the audience. This is why we have <laughs> a diverse uh, group of speakers. But this is the, the pleasure of that. Sorry, please move on. True, true. And the challenge accepted. Uh, the, the, I will start from introducing myself. Who am I? Uh, because uh, Margarita already introduced introduced me um, a bit. I just want to show you the path that I went through, and I'm still on that path. And it was not the straight line. 
Uh, I'm a uh, physicist by profession. Actually, actually it's um, a particle astrophysicist, and it started from the studies of applied mathematics, but mathematics became too abstract, so I also simultaneously started the te theoretical physics. That's how it uh, stay. I went for the PhD studies in astrophysics, and while doing my PhD, I was also, also uh, involved in the company. I was working full time in the company when I was dealing with orbital mechanics. Uh, so, as you can see, I'm involved in scientific um, environment and in the companies. And from the beginning of my professional um, path, I was uh, I was in the startup uh, environment. For example, I was already I, I was CEO in one of the startup. And today, because I I gain these leadership skills working in three different um, industries, I, I um, today I having this this uh, leadership skills. I own my own company. Uh, it was also said as to the guy, and I'm still in the scientific institute. Uh, it's Institute of Nuclear Physics, Polish Academy of Sciences. So so maybe starting from the company. Through the AI, it's a deep tech, it's a high tech, it's a space tech uh, startup. And what we are doing, we are developing an AI based earthquake monitoring and forecasting system. And um, just to give you a small um, introduction, uh, most of the people they don't think much about earthquakes until uh, some large damaging happens, and then suddenly they see all the quakes around the world. And there are many of them. Uh, because we are talking about, let's say, last year it was on, only last year it was 18 earthquakes with magnitude uh, seven and above, which are already destroying. But more important is how do we do that? We do that with the use of new technologies, uh, space technologies, and also because of the scientific discoveries. Because it appears that. Um, the information about upcoming earthquakes, they can be seen faster by looking into space, by observing uh, space weather. In, uh, in this meaning, uh, it's a cosmic radiation and by, um, by analyzing satellite data. And just to tell you a bit more about those two aspects of uh, technologies that we are uh, doing, we are, we are uh, developing about the cosmic radiation, because uh, this is a novel approach uh, into uh, seismicity, into geo geophysics in general, and this correlation uh, is actually coming from the studies, uh, from, the, from the research that I was doing together with my colleagues. And this is a peer-reviewed um, uh, discovery, uh, already checked with a various type of uh, data. And within the company, uh, because in the beginning we were uh, based on uh, open source historical data, uh, but this will not give us really a predictions of earthquakes. So what we did, we developed our own dedicated cosmic ray uh, detectors. This is what you see in the in the picture. Those are IoT devices. We put them on the ground. It's not in the space. It, it is in the, on, on the ground ground device. Uh, and we create a network of dogs, a network of cosmic radiation data that can um, show us, that can tell us about upcoming earthquakes. This is already the data that is uh, big data time, and that's why we are using uh, deep machine learning models. This is also something that uh, I know a bit better because in the past I was developing a uh, neural net uh, algorithms, and that's what we are doing in the company today as well. And the, such algorithms, they identify anomalies that are already information about upcoming earthquakes that are just pros processed into alerts for end users. Uh, and about the space data, uh, we are using two types of um, Earth observation satellite data, SAR for the event localization. We can see an event on this picture in here. Event meaning epicenter of the earthquake. And we are also using uh, thermal data to raise the accuracy of, of our predictions. Um, yeah, so that's the, that's the, as simple as it can be, it's, it's just to gather data, to, to analyze them using deep machine learning uh, models, to have the information about the anomalies found and process them into alerts. 
Uh, and this would not, not be possible if not the uh, partnerships with uh, mostly with scientific institutes that you can see on the slide. We have created a strong network of partners uh, from Poland, but not only from, from abroad, actually from around the world. And those uh, partners they come from dif for, uh, for different aspects of our technology, allowing us to, to move further forward with our development. But now, also, I would like to uh, share a bit about the space tech in Poland in general. And I can say a bit more because I'm a member of a uh, Polish uh, space uh, technology cluster. And this cluster it has 49 um, members. It's focusing, it's, it's members, those are commercial companies, scientific and research organizations, representatives of academic uh, community and institutions of operating in space sector in general. And the area of activities are various it's, it's like numerous of those we have space robotics rocket um, technologies uh, space education astrobiology 3d uh, printing software development tracking satell satellites in uh, low orbit satellite uh, teleport and much more and just to give you um, the view uh, a bit of what is happening in poland here I will, I will show you a couple of things that happened last uh, year in 2023. For example, uh, uh, company uh, Scanway, uh, they have a satellite already in the orbit, it's called Starwide. And then we have the uh, innovative uh, project by scientists from um, Rzeszów University of Technology uh, with the support of uh, Podkar Podkarpackie Center of Innovation. Um, the company uh, and Answer in Space will develop a prototype real-time system for European Space Agency. Here we have the agreement on uh, Polish observation satellite con constellation uh, that was already signed. Uh, there was a successful test testing of Space Forest um, Perun rocket. Answer in Space, uh, company Answer in Space and uh, ITTI in, uh, together in project on the world's largest uh, telescope, new Aurora satellite terminal from uh, Thorium uh, Space. Uh, the company Astronica organized uh, 20 European Space Mechanics and Tri uh, Biology Symposium for European Space Agency. Arabs Poland in the project uh, is in the project Space TSN Definition and Demonstration. Uh, military uh, academy, technical academy, and space forest cooperation in uh, missile technology for defense. New missile technology center. It's uh, of uh, so-called Kashevich Institute uh, of uh, Aviation. KP Labs. It's a, a company. Uh, it has in orbit the, the uh, satellite Intu Intuition One. Scanway, our company Scanway has partnered with uh, Magu Imaging and won a competition from the German uh, Space Agency. And that would be it. So, a couple of things um, that, that, um, and that I managed to show you, but this is only a fraction of what is happening in Poland. Thank you, Noemi, for introducing us this uh, wonderful space ecosystem uh, in Poland and uh, uh, your commercial activities. The reason why actually I asked from Noemi to join is to represent also uh, the view from the private sector, and I will come back to this. Before that, I, I would like to take questions from the audience and the other speakers. Um, uh, so, first, I will give to you the floor if you want to ask us something noemi or to comment if not uh, i can uh, i can ask something um um as, a, as an employer, Noemi, I would like to ask you what kind of skills and expertise do you prioritize when you hire employees? Okay, first of all, it's not that I'm hiring. Uh, we are a startup that is quite small, 14 people. 
and the recruitment process is not yet developed as much as we would like to. So today we are hiring uh, people that we know or people that know the people. But I have some knowledge on the, um, um, I mean, at, about the skills because that's actually a very good question. Uh, in a startup ecosystem, uh, which differs for for other big companies or let's say uh, research institutes. We are looking for um, individuals that are easy to adapt in the new environment so that, for example, they, they, they will not look only at the task that they are getting or I would say differently. It, it, will, it should not be a person that is dependent on the task that, it get, that is getting, but it should come with its, uh, his or her own initiatives, ideas, uh, solutions to the problems that we are um, that we are having. So many times um, uh, it, it appears that you know the person is coming to a company that is a startup and thinks that uh, will be working as I don't know UX UI designer, but it appears that she or he is also a developer, is a, a project manager, and then accounting as well. So people also need to need to know that. Um, this work is, is multitasking. Uh, it comes with yeah, with uh, various tasks. And this I'm is expected. linked with, with my next question. Um, also, it's relevant about the lack of skills. How can educational institution best prepare students to meet the evolving needs of the commercial space industry? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I think well. It's a question with many answers, but uh, just from your side, uh, it would be interesting for us to have your views. You are the CEO of the cluster, the, the companies, you have two companies, so that's. There are many, many answers for that, that's true, but I think the best um, strategy for that is to show them um, the reality to invite, for example, uh, the uh, decisive personas of the companies into the uh, schools, into the uh, universities to to speak about what they are looking for uh, and have this this um, partnership or, or whatever it will be created um, between scientific institute or, or university and the company uh, tighter so that, for example, in our startup, we have many interns, um, Erasmus, non-Erasmus. We have a couple of universities that uh, the students are coming to us. And after a couple of months, they uh, they go out with uh, bigger knowledge. They already know what is needed, uh, what, what skill set is, is needed. So I think internships are also something to think about. Interesting. We have a question from Ganto. Um, he asks, do you have local NGOs supporting the education of young people in STEM and space, including commercialization? I think you write the ask the, the right person, uh, Ganto, by the way, because <laughs> maybe you explain better, uh, uh, Noemi. But Noemi has an experience also with NGOs, so I think she's the right person. I do, but unfortunately not Polish one. <laughs> and actually, I I don't know if do, we do have NGOs um, as, as such in ed education. I know the programs. I know that we have. It's it's like a boom in in this um, aspect. Uh, meaning when I'm saying it's a boom, there are many programs, many uh, small companies, or it's a company, or it's an NGO, or such things. Uh, that are um, getting more active and mm -hmm. involved and very focused on educational, um, on education in general um, and space, uh, including commer commercialization. But I can't like name them. And then we have a comment from Masi. I can add new space foundation, which is focused on education. Just finished the contest in the uh, the contest direction Earth under the auspicion of ESA. Yes, so that's the that's the comment. So that's one of one of the uh, NGO. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you, Marcia. Yeah, for following the discussion. 
Um, okay, and um, maybe one last question from my side, uh, and then I give to to mention before. Um, uh, Noemi, that uh, you collaborate with uh, uh, entities not only in, in Poland, but internationally. And I would like to ask you how important is international collaboration for the success of uh, private space companies? It depends on the company. If you have the, uh, the uh, product that is uh, that its market is international, it's very important. If the market is actually Polish, then you stay in Poland, and that's what you do. For us, as Astrotech AI, this is extremely important because in Poland we do not have earthquakes. This is not yeah. a market that we are aiming at. Um, but international, Italy, uh, Mexico, um, Japan, that's the countries that we are um, collaborating with. And the important is the uh, high importance. Thank you, Noemi. Stay with us. Um, and uh, now I have the the pleasure to welcome someone actually from Italy, Noemi. Uh, it's Vittoria. Vittoria, maybe you can open your camera. And, Hi. Uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> Vittoria is a trainee in the Veneto region. Veneto region is. Um, is a very active uh, region in space activities um, and um, they organize a very interesting event uh, for, yo for young people uh, in the next months. Um, and maybe, Vittoria, you can introduce yourself and share some information about this uh, event and uh, how, um, uh, how people can apply and uh, This about. Maybe in the meantime, okay. I will find the link of the website and then people can see what is. Yes, I can uh, about. share it with you in the chat and also I'm going to show you on my screen. Do you see it? Yes, and maybe uh, Vittoria, since we have some minutes, we can yeah. also show show a video. I think you had a video on Veneto yes, Stars. Yes. Perfect. Video. So I share the link. Maybe say a few words, and then we show to everyone the video, and um, we can uh, we we can uh, uh, receive questions from you if you if you have. Okay. I don't know if you can see it. The video. Uh, no, we don't, but first share a few information oh. about Veneto stars. Maybe okay, you can stop fine. sharing and I will try to share the video from my side. Okay. So just a moment. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, so, thank you so much, Margarita. Thank you so much, Nereus, for this opportunity, first of all. And thank you so much for all the speakers um, that show a really brilliant perspective of space uh, in different um, countries. So, thank you so much for everyone. Uh, so, I'm Victoria. Actually, I'm not a trainee, uh, Margarita, but <laughs> thank you. No, I'm not. Um, because I'm you don't look more than 20 years old. That's why I said uh, three. Oh, thank you so much. I'm 26, by the way. So maybe I, I look younger, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> that will be helpful, helpful in the future. Uh, so I'm a collaborator. So I work in uh, Veneto region in the Brussels office. And I am a uh, in charge of the desk Innovazione of Veneto Agenda Digitale 2025 and Veneto Innovazione here in Brussels. And I'm also uh, one of the projectors of this uh, challenge of Veneto Stars. Uh, so it's a challenge. Uh, so the timelines are uh, <laughs> so it's a bit you short the time you can. Uh, so now apply because um, it's from the 1st to the 15th of April. So the deadline will be on the 15th of April. Um, 
So but maybe they can visit there the the venue and uh, engage in networking and uh... yes, sure, 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 no problem. So uh, that's fine for us. And also, um, it's the second edition of this challenge, and uh, so this year will be on the cultural heritage and UNESCO uh, sites by using uh, space data. Um, so the time slice, as I said, it's from February 1st to April 15, where the teams can uh, submit their ideas and uh, projects and get the chance to move uh, into the next phase uh, that will be there uh, on April 19th. So 10 ideas and concepts will be selected. Um, and then the, the, the teams will be awarded with a stay in Venice, where they will discover, you know, all the opportunities of the areas, visit uh, research centers, and also present, uh, of course, their ideas during the space meetings Veneto that will take place at the end of May, uh, from the 20 to the 22nd of May in Venice. Um, and during this event, uh, the winner will be chosen by so a jury of experts and professionals from the space sector. Um, so the winning team will be awarded with a one week stay in Veneto uh, in June. So to concretely apply their idea, their project with the support of experts. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is the, the, the project. Uh, so, as I said, uh, the time slides are very thick, but that will not be a problem if you, you can reach out to us uh, uh, for all the information that you need uh, and also to discuss about it. So, yes, that's it. Uh, so, Margarita shared with you all the, the link of the, of the website where there is also a box where you can contact us for more information. Uh, you can also contact me. I can also share with you maybe in the chat uh, my name and my contacts uh, if you want. Um, yeah, that's it. Also on the website, if you cannot, uh, Margarita, there is also the, the video if you want to see or maybe you can yes. share. Yes, I think we still, how, do you remember how many minutes is the video? Uh, I think one or two minutes. Okay, okay, I can try to share it. Uh, maybe before the video, uh, does anyone have a question to Vittoria? So the applications are addressed to students. Yes, uh, from 18. From 18 to 25, exactly. And mm -hmm. I know that we have many educational uh, represent representatives from educational institutions. So I think maybe it's a chance and opportunity that to share this uh, information with uh, with your students or to be aware about it. Because mm -hmm. I think you do you in do it on a on a annual basis, right? Yes. Yes. So it's exactly. a, it's a, it's a, um, it's it's not a project. It's an initiative. It's an mm -hmm. ongoing initiative. Please, Noemi. I think you wanted to, to ask something or. Yes, I was I, I was about to ask about the age that I see the limitation there because we have a brilliant idea, but of course everybody has a brilliant idea. But like like Victoria, you look not more than twenty, so you can apply. <laughs> Just keep the ID documents and problem solved. <laughs> We yeah. are too old. We are too old for that. <laughs> but I guess our um, interns can can apply, right? Yes, sure. It's from uh, eighteen to twenty five, so okay. it's like university's age and also interns' age. So yes, no problem. You can find the group of interns or students, and through yeah. them you can also. Okay. Uh, so I share, I try to share at least the video because today I'm very disappointed by the connection. My connection, it's, it's my fault. Um, let me see. Uh, Vittoria, Sim. would you let me know if you can hear the video just okay. to, sig to signal? Mm -hmm. You can hear, you can listen to the sound. Uh, no, I uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, let me try again. Um, let me see. Let me try again. 
sometimes it works sometimes not but okay i will do it now maybe now it's um uh, it works now still no. proceeding okay yes <laughs> yes maybe like okay. this Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. That will work. Okay. Yeah. I, I I put it. Okay. 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 I I enlarge it and I. Okay. Um. Stiamo lanciando un contest europeo, internazionale, è un contest rivolto ai giovani dai 18 ai 25 anni, si chiama Veneto Stars. Winner of the very first edition of Veneto Stars GD is uh, the big coming from the Netherlands, the Spain is surrendered. Okay, maybe we can stop it at the moment. And I will share with you the link uh, to watch the video, of course, but you to time uh, restrictions. Yes, but also on the, on the website, they can find it. Exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me see if I have any, okay, there are no questions. Um, Thank you very much, Vittoria, for this great uh, presentation and opportunity because uh, through these webinars, we would like also to promote opportunities coming from our member regions towards uh, others. Uh, if there are no more questions, then I would like to close this meeting. The next webinar, I know I haven't found the time to, um, uh, to announce the date, but it would be probably end of May or in June. Um, and then I will uh, share with you uh, the proper information about it. I would like to thank you all for the participation uh, and see you next time. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, Margarita. Thank, thank you. Thank bye. you. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.